It's not over. Stop the fight! No! People! Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ, I'm the king, kill everyone! Ah! All right, guys, welcome back to Broke Bets. Lane here with you. Always got my co host with me, Carson, as always. Oh, yes, sir. We are back for another picks video. Yeah, a lot of pick em type fights on this card, but um, still going to be some enjoyable fights because if a pick em fight's happening, uh, it'll be pretty competitive. So, um, first fight Igor Sever. Severa, Severino, sorry, his last name is also listed as Silva in the Contender Series fight, um, versus Andre Lima. Give me Andre Lima. This dude looks fucking real good. Um, the takedown defense was there. The scramble ability was there on his Contender Series fight. He up to the feet. Um, stalking style and just that Muay Thai uh, type of kicks, just crashing his shin into your forearms, into your body. Um, and Igor, super wide hooks, throwing hooks just way too wide. Um, on the Contender Series, he was losing up until just kind of spamming hooks on his smaller opponent. Um, his grappling did look pretty good. However, um, I think he's going to slow himself down with a lot of that grappling. Um, and uh, Lima landing the bigger, cleaner strikes throughout the fight. And uh, I'm going to take Lima by a knockout. I think uh, Igor just leaves himself a little bit too exposed. So give me a round two knockout for Lima. Yeah, um, both these guys are pretty young. Igor is 20 years old, about to be 21, and uh, Lima is 25. So um, they're both uh, pretty raw, and I'd say Igor is a lot more raw as well. Um, like you said, he does have very wide hooks, and he he's kind of spams those uh, quite often. Um uh, he can grapple a little bit, but but yeah, I mean, I thought Lima's takedown defense was really good, and I, I think he'll be um, physically stronger in this one. I thought um, I thought I saw that too. I thought that he looked a lot more strong, and Igor has that young kind of energy, and maybe doesn't keep that strength in the fight. Yeah, Lima is really good takedown defense. He was very relaxed and and stalking his opponent, leg kicks. Um, yeah, I mean, where he stands out is with his kicks. I mean, some of his punches looked a little awkward, like he didn't, like, turn over his fists and was thrown from the hips a little bit. But, um, yeah, I really love his, his kicks, and I, I think he'll be able to, to finish Igor here. Yeah, I'm hoping for his line to come down. He's a little bit more of a sizable favorite. So hopefully, if you guys are watching this, please bet Igor to, to offset that line a little bit. Um, yeah, both these guys are undefeated, too, so... Right, should right. Be a, should be an interesting fight here. All right. Uh, to start it off, Lima, KO, round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Miles Johns versus Cody Gibson. In my opinion, a great position uh, for Cody Gibson, just stylistically in a fight like this. Um, Miles Johns is a, you know, strong dude, power, powerful punches, uh, you know, wrestling background, but cardio is just not his uh, forte and outside of round one those punches they get a little bit more loopy his mouth opens up gets more tired and cody gibson wants these fucking wins man and and that's evident in that brad katona fight just the energy he brought to that not to mention cody gibson one of the biggest fucking bantamweights you'll see he's got like the cheeto vera build with maybe a little bit more size even than Cheeto. So I like his size advantage coming into this one. Um, he's got good body kicks, high volume striking, pressure. And I think Miles Johns just, if he doesn't get Gibson out of there in round one, it's just going to be uh, Gibson wor- wearing him down. And I like a Gibson round three submission. I think he out pressures. Johns will. Uh, Shoot takedowns when he's exhausted, and uh, Gibson can lock something up there. So, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, he's he's huge for this bantamweight division. I think he's kind of like uh, I won't say he fights like O'Malley, but uh, the build is similar: five ten and uh, seventy one inches of reach. He's got a three inch height advantage, four inch reach advantage here, um, and I think uh, his volume will will be a little bit uh, better here. Um, like you said, John's. Throws those overhooks and he'll slow down as the fight goes on. 
He got busted for PEDs, I believe, in his last fight. So that was turned to a no contest. So not, yeah, probably won't have that advantage here, you know. So <laughs> right, right. Um, could still be on him, but uh, probably not. Uh, yeah, I mean, Gibson kind of doesn't uh, move his head very well, or or he does move his head very well, but uh, he will go in those fifty-fifty exchanges and uh, he'll get hit a few times. It, um, yeah, he's definitely like he very said, hittable. He, he, yeah, he's very hittable. But he's uh, he's got a good volume. So. And uh, Johns, I just feel like, you know, Dan Argetta was never that good an opponent. It was ridiculous that Argetta was that big of a favorite. The dude striking is completely ass, and both of them were grapplers. So Johns having slightly more power and accuracy on the feet allowed him to win. But I wasn't even convinced he beat Morales, losing to Castaneda on a comeback fight. Um Cody Gibson, I just feel like, can overpressure here if he just stays away from the big shots early. And even if uh, Johns does th- try to throw fight enders, it might just end up getting him more tired. And uh, if he doesn't find that knockout, then Gibson will just continue to you know, pour it on him. So, uh, yeah, I like a betting position here for Gibson. And especially since the MMA community doesn't seem to be on his side, I'm going to wait a little bit for this uh, line to grow. So... Yeah, uh, maybe they just see lost his last one against Katona. Katona didn't really have a great performance in uh, his most recent fight against Armfield, and Gibson's 36 years old, I believe. Yeah, 36, 36 and a half years Impressive old. tough wins from Gibson, too. Flying knee, arm triangle on the ground. I, I mean, they're not the best opponents, but uh, still still you know decisive wins. So Yeah, never, never been KO'd before, too. Tough guy. All right. Gibson, submission, round three. Okay, for the next fight, we have Muhammad Usman versus Mick Parkin. Ow, the, ow. The, the true main event. If you guys have ever been with this channel, yeah, we've broken down an Usman fight, like, what, three or four times now, and every time we shit on him. <laughs> um, And I'm not giving Mick Parkin props because he's kind of shit too. So, But we're going to pick Parkin. Um, I think overall... Grappling, he'll have an advantage. Clinching, he'll have an advantage. And Usman's size will a little bit slow him down, but the scare in this fight would just be that Usman does have a nice jab, and that's about it in his game. And uh, Parkin looks incredibly slow. So um, that's your scare, but I think Parkin will make this a boring fight in the clinch, in the grappling, and uh, win a decision here. Yeah, um, I would be a little... I would favor Parkin a little more. Uh, after that Pogues fight, but after the Machado fight, man, he looked so bad in that one. Yes. Um, and Machado's, like, not... He's not good either. It's not like it's, it's a tough opponent going in there. Um, but, yeah, that fight was horrible. He was, I think uh, Parkin was, like, minus 300 or something, and he did not look minus 300 worthy. Right. But, yeah, Usman's not the best either. Maybe he shoots a... Um, a fast double leg is able to get him down, but yeah, I, I, I don't know here. Decent jab, I guess. Right. Yeah. He, and, he, you know, he was losing round one to Jake Collier, which Collier does start fast, but then he got an eye poke on Collier, which kind of helped him, you know, hit the jab over the course of the fight. He was in the least dominant damaging performance against Junior Taffa, who doesn't have takedown defense, so... um Mixed resume on both sides. That's the truth. Um, and even if either of these guys add each, uh, add either of these to, uh, if either guy adds the other to their win column, it really doesn't even mean much. So, um, anyway, any more thoughts? Uh, no, not really. Uh, Usman up to thirty-four years old. Mick Parkin twenty-eight. So he's probably more in his prime. But yeah. Who knows? Interesting. All right. Parkin by decision. Okay. For the next fight, we have Montserrat Rendon versus Daria Zelinakova. That's as best as I can do. I'm going to do with Daria. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, Carson, who would you do? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, anyway, Daria uh, just feels like she's the better boxer here. Uh, Rendon. 
her hands look horrible, bro. She's the slowest girl I've ever seen uh, with her hands. No damage behind any strike. And truly only could win the fight against Vidal because Vidal threw lead kicks that she could grab and take her down with. Haven't seen a good takedown attempt. She's just a big uh, a big girl for this weight class. And I feel like Daria's the better boxer. However, the cardio, all that shit, I don't know, man. It, this is a, a low-level fight. Give me uh, Zelina Kova by decision. Yeah, I'd probably favor her in the stand-up. Uh, her ground game did not look very good. Uh, she's gotten taken down in multiple uh, um, fights of hers. Um, I think one pretty far back. Um, I think like her third or fourth fight, she got taken down and was on her back for most of the first round and then most of the second round. And then uh, uh, the girl kind of gassed out and she was able to reverse it in and ground and pound her out in that one. Um, Zitova, I think, was her opponent in that one. But yeah, for Rendon, um, she's 6 and 0, oh, but. Three of these wins are by split decision, so she's not really putting her stamp on on any of these wins. Um, yeah, she's super slow in boxing. Um, yeah, she's got big boobs. I'll say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's uh, 35 years old for um, the Russian chick Sudakova, 28. So yeah, I think uh, she she'll be uh, better here. Yeah, going to be just somewhat of a sloppy fight here. Uh, also, Rendon, no finishes in her career, which is pretty wild. So, I know it's six fights, but you can't choke someone out. That's kind of crazy. Anyway, uh, give me, give us Zelina Kova by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Steven Wynn versus Jarno Ahrens. We're going to go with Steven here, but man, I would call this dude just a parlay buster way ahead of time um and it's not because he's a horrible fighter or anything but Jarno Aaron's shockingly I think a little bit better than people would anticipate um and when it took him three tries on the contender to get in the UFC and he had to fight a dude with zero defense in his game to get through <laughs> so uh don't trust it don't trust him is my advice to everyone else um I'm gonna take him by decision I just feel like Jarno um, the fight IQ is really lacking. He's going to his back somewhat often um, versus like Sun Wu Choi. The big thing with him, though, this dude's got knockout power, Jarno Aarons. That right hand uh, to cut down distance is powerful. He almost knocked out Gomis with it, who's pretty damn good. He had that uppercut on Choi. Um, so, complete dodgeable fight, in my opinion. Um, but. I, I I have to stick with Win because I think he has better technical boxing. So give me Win by decision. Yeah, Win does uh, the basics um, all pretty well. Uh, straight punches, got a really nice jab. Uh, he's constantly throwing that out, and you saw in that uh, his last fight against Cunningham. He, I mean, he was just sticking out the jab, and um, by the end of that first round, Cunningham's face was all busted up just from just from that jab, and then eventually he dropped him at the end of that uh, first round. Um, yeah, he does uh, does those basics really well. He, he had a two-year layoff pretty much from his last fight um, to his previous one. So he was on the Contender Series in 2021 and then Contender Series again in 2023. Um, but yeah, I mean, John Rowe Aarons, he's fight IQ, like you said, but he's very powerful. Um, kind of got out grapple against Gomez and... I don't really see that happening here, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he's powerful, bad IQ. Um, but, yeah, Wynn's just got the basics. Yeah, he, he knocked down uh, Sun Wu Choi, and then he tied him up on the ground for about 10 seconds before he attempted ground and pound, which was just horrible IQ move, um, especially when you have someone hurt. And, like you said, he ends up on his back a lot. Um, I haven't seen much of Win going on the ground with people. Um not sure if he would use that weapon. Also, Aaron's got his front leg kicked by Choi super easily because he's a wide stance dude. But once again, dodgeable fight in my eyes. And I could just see a lot of people putting a lot of money behind Win and uh, being disappointed there. So just be careful. Yeah, I think he's like minus two, 220, 220. somewhere around there. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, I think he'll get up to probably minus 300. Yeah. 
Well, when you get like a highlight knockout on the contender, they'll always hype you up a little bit more than you probably should be. So, um, anyway, win by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Ricardo Hamos versus Julian Erosa. Going with Hamos, but this is going to be a scrappy ass fight. Um, Hamos probably. You know, more known for his ground game than his stand-up, but it's still, I'd say, pretty good stand-up. And Julian Arosa, um, you know, he's just a wild, a wild man. He'll run into punches, try to eat them. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. And uh, he's got pretty decent grappling of, uh, of his own, but he makes fights real close um, for the most part. And uh, I think Hamos and him will be in for a possible fight of the night right here, so... We're going to go with Hamos by decision. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, both these guys like to bang. I just think uh, Arosa at 34 years old coming off two pretty uh, brutal KOs. Um, I, I think uh, at some point uh, Ramos will be able to catch him. You saw two fights ago that, that spinning elbow. That was nasty. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think he's got... Pretty good skills everywhere. Good striking, strong grappler. Um, got pretty good knees, elbows, and I, I think at some point he'll be able to catch a Rosa here. Yeah, I mean that's that, that feels like what it's going to be. I mean, good, yeah, good knees. More uh, can implement more kicks into the game. In the small cage, it feels like a Rosa does a really good job of just over pressuring people. But that could be his demise because he will just run into strikes at times. So interesting fight it's hard to even exactly pick a winner because i think this one will just be very close so give us hamos by decision okay for the next fight we have trey ogden versus kurt halibau man weird fight um i'm gonna go with trey ogden but man this guy is just so inconsistent it's unbelievable um you know fights jordan levitt jordan levitt kicks his legs just barely enough to win a decision um fights daniel zellhuber looks much faster than him moves better the entire fight and zellhuber i think a lot of people have a pretty high opinion of um loses to bahamundes pretty definitively and then beats mata's ass pretty much the entire fight so coming into a strange one here i feel like ogden does just have the little bit better range jab and um he does have a nice double leg entry, and Kurt Hollabau got taken down pretty easily at times on the uh, or on his t- uh, tough finale. So I'm gonna take Ogden by decision because this guy can't knock anyone out to save his life. Um, but yeah, interesting matchup nonetheless. What, what do you think? Yeah, he, he's never knocked anybody out. Uh, he's never been knocked out himself either. So um, that's pretty strange. You don't uh, typically see that all too often, but. Yeah, I mean, he does a really good job, distance and range, uh, throws out that nice jab, and he's he's tough to deal with. Zellhuber couldn't get anything going in that fight. Mata couldn't get anything going in that fight either. So, um, yeah, a savvy veteran. Um, I, th- I think he could take down Halbao here as well. Um, Halbao hasn't seen a decision in quite a while. I don't think he's seen one since, like, 2019. Um, so I think the longer this fight goes, it uh, favors Ogden even more. Um, but yeah, I think Ogden by decision here is, uh, is a pretty good spot. Yeah, Halabao just brings a ton of pressure with his boxing into people's games. He's kind of willing to eat the punches to keep moving forward. And uh, again, I think he just got taken down a little, bit, a little bit easily. Obviously, he got the submission on Austin Hubbard, but overall... Um, I do think Trey can kind of anticipate some of those moments and make a good shot and secure a round. Um, but obviously, knockout threat feels like it's on Hollabell's side. So, other than that, uh, Ogden by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Edmund Shabazian versus AJ Dobson. Both of these guys, I think, you know, coming into the UFC had a lot of hype on their names. Obviously, Edmund had a little run prior to a lot of his grappling losses here in the UFC, but AJ Dobson, a lot of people had a ton of hype on him before he fought Jacob Malkoon, who's just a nightmare matchup for a newcomer. Um, we're going to go with Edmund. 
I, or at least I'm going to go with Edmund. I feel like he's just going to be the more active striker in this fight, and it's going to be close. AJ Dobson is just a little bit too hesitant for me. Um, I've I've seen too much of him waiting when he, in that Tafan and Chukwe fight, too much of him waiting in the Patrosian fight, and I feel like Edmund will uh, he'll be going first more, landing a little bit more. Um, and I don't Edmund's you know biggest weakness is getting tired due to the grappling, and I feel like Dobson won't set a high enough pace in this fight for Edmund to get exhausted. So. To Chabazian by decision here. Yeah, Dobson's uh, super hesitant, um, has a ton of feints, um, a lot more feints than uh, actual punches. Um, decent head movement, I'd say. Yep. Um, he's never been KO'd before, never been finished before. Um, and typically that's how Edmund Chabazian's winning is is typically in that first round uh, by KO. So um, be interested to see how this fight goes when it goes longer. Um, yeah, but I, I do favor Edmund just based on uh, activity and, and uh, volume. Uh, he struggled when he's getting taken down. Bronson, Herman, uh, Hermanson, Imavov. Um, but yeah, um, Hernandez, throw him in there too. But yeah, I don't really see Dobson doing, t- doing too much of that. But yeah, just just the uh, activity from Shabazzian. I think he'll win, but this will be his, his second decision win if he does win here. Right. And, you know, he's losing to pretty highly ranked fighters. You know, Jack Hermanson, right. always been up there. Brunson, sitting around that region, but he found, you know, he he knew the weakness in Edmund's game. Um, I'd like to see both guys just go for it a little bit more in this fight. I mean, Dobson, if he could raise the pace a little bit, uh, he would be a little bit more enjoyable here in the UFC and maybe, you know, put a stamp on some of these fights, so... Other than that, a uh, good matchup and uh, Shabazian by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Carl Williams versus Justin Taffa. I'm a bit torn on this one. I'm going to go with Taffa. Um, honestly, I feel like this fight has a lot of film holes in it, meaning like Taffa has never been taken down before, but there's only uh, one, at least never been t- t- taken down in the UFC. But he's only had a one shot ever shot on him, and it was by Harry Hunsucker. And if you go watch it, one of the worst takedown attempts I've ever seen. So, big if there, for one. I like that Tafa's shorter, that maybe when Carl Williams tries to shoot his double leg that he loves to do, that Tafa can lower his base and maybe get get his uh, arms below uh, Carl Williams. Carl Williams getting tired in these fights. Um, obviously winning one way for the most part, shooting that blast double and Tafa. Um, I, I just feel like he's got a bigger power advantage on the feet and timing advantage in his striking. So I'm going to go with his, his way with a knockout, but man, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like Williams has uh, more ways to win. I mean, if Tafa wins, it's by round one KO. Um, that's how he's pretty much won every single. I put round fight. two. I think maybe Williams gets the takedowns in round one. Who knows? But anyway, keep okay. going. Round two KO is last. Uh, round two KO was in 2019, and <laughs> one, two, three, four, five fights since of his wins have all been by first round KO. So right, we'll see. Maybe maybe uh, maybe Tafa can can last a round of Williams knocked uh, and uh, finish him in round two. But yeah, I just think Williams will be able to get those takedowns and just wear out Tafa and tire him out. Yeah, Williams is going to slow down as well, too, but uh, I think he'll be able to have enough energy to get those takedowns in two and three as well um, and, and just uh, eliminate Tafa's power on the feet here. I'd like to see him attempt more ground and pound. Like, if he if he could use right. some fucking elbows on the ground, that would be just huge for his game, but not really using a lot of ground and pound. Neither of these guys in my opinion, have a legit win in the UFC. Uh, Carl Williams beat Chase Sherman, who shit, beat Lukas Breschke, who shit. Um, the guy in the contender he fought had no cardio. Um, Tafa beat Austin Lane, who shit, beat Parker Porter, who's fat a fat slob, um, beat Harry Hunsucker, who's fat slob. 
and uh, and lost to Jared Vandera. And he lost to Jared Vandera. So there's no confidence. But if you're going to take someone in this fight, I'd rather take the two twenty underdog or whatever he's at because um, I, I don't feel like Carl Williams should be that big of a favorite. But who knows, man? Um, yeah, uh, you got um, a lot of unknowns here in this one. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, Tafa, I think he's probably one of the only heavyweights, if not the only way to, to ever miss that heavyweight mark in his right. Darion Zucker fight. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, strange, strange fight. And if this was Junior Tafa, if this was Junior Tafa, I would pick Carl Williams all day because that takedown defense versus uh, uh, Muhammad Usman that Junior Tafa had was so fucking trash. So I feel like Justin might have a little bit more skills in his back pocket for that stuff. Who knows, but... All right, Tafa KO round two. Okay, for the next fight, we have Luis Puelo versus Fernando Padilla. Going with Fernando Padilla, but this is going to be a scrappy fight. This Puelo guy, he likes to walk through punches with and get his hands up, and he likes to deliver the pain. Um, Padilla fights a little bit more of a pretty fight. And... Uh, the biggest concern, and I think this is the, how the fight plays out, is how Puelo's uh, calf kick works out. Because Padilla got kicked in the calf pretty clean by Kyle Nelson multiple times. And that's one of Puelo's biggest weapons. Coming into this one, uh, Fernando just has to address it. And if he doesn't, I think he just gets uh, swarmed in this fight. So I'm going to go with Padilla. I'm going to say he learned maybe from his mistakes here. I'm going to say by a round two KO... Um, that reach and that jab that he's got just are a great weapon. And I think uh, Puelo's got to break down that distance, and he's going to get his nose hit a lot just coming into that range. So what do you think? Yeah, both these guys are finishers, and both of them have never been finished before. So uh, um, we'll see if that, that changes here. But, yeah, like you said, um, Puelo has got those really good leg kicks. Takedown defense is, is not the best, but... Uh, Will Padilla use it? I, I don't know. Um, he's got really good accuracy with his punches. I uh, saw in that Julian Arosa fight, Julian Arosa was kind of um, moving his head all over the place, and he just got knocked around, bang, bang, bang. He landed every single one of those punches in that finishing sequence. So love that uh, his accuracy is there. Um, but, yeah, super tough fight. Uh, should be a really good one, and I lean towards uh, Padilla here. Yeah, also, you know, losing versus Kyle Nelson, a lot of people would probably say, well, Kyle Nelson's shit, but Kyle Nelson actually makes these fights pretty close. Um, also, it was debatable if he did lose. I, it was a close fight to score. It's just one of those fights. And uh, he ate some big shots in there. Uh, I think this this fight's just going to be a war. And like you said, the, the takedown defense at Puelo, like, he knocked down Robbie Ring and then like accepted a takedown very strangely right after it so maybe Padilla will wrestle um I'm not sure if that would just hurt his gas tank for the fight but um an option at least that he could use other than that a nice little scrappy fight uh we're going with Padilla KO round two okay for the next fight we have Billy Quarantillo versus Yusuf Zalal I'm going with Zalal this fight is interesting. That's all. I, that's what I can say about it. I feel like Zalal, you know, he was cut from the UFC like two years ago. Um, he's a really good fighter in my eyes. I mean, he was cut just because uh, he faced some good fighters. He faced Ilya Teporia. He faced Sean Woodson. Um, he had another loss in there. He didn't he? There's someone Watch else. Here. Well, he drew. He Song drew. Choi. Song Wu Choi. That's right split decision there too um and then he almost finished Blackshear and debatably should have been finished um that fight in the third round and Blackshear people have a pretty high opinion of now um Billy Q there's just a little bit too much uh like I don't know a little bit too wild in my opinion you know his pressure and his game all that is very effective it's great but he over pressures to the clinch a lot of times and uh, gets himself in trouble. I feel like Zalal, for one, now in the UFC, coming up to uh, back up to featherweight for this fight. I feel like he could maybe land a lot of takedowns. He had some nice timing on his takedowns. 
um, on Billy Q and just fight a cleaner fight. He fights well on the outside with his footwork and uh, Billy Q runs into a lot of strikes, but it, it'll be a close, fun one. So I'll, I'll, I'm on Zalal's side. What do you think here? Uh, yeah, uh, this should be a really fun fight. Um, but yeah, like you were saying, uh, Zalal was cut from the UFC. He fought a ton of those good opponents, but he was still like 22, 23, 24 years old when he was fighting those guys. He's now 27, and Billy Q um, is 35 now. So um, I think he's losing a step in his game. Very hittable. Love his pressure, though. Um, he's He kind of wears out his opponents in, in that second and third round and, and takes over there. Um, but, yeah, I just think... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think it'll be a close fight. Zalal's kickboxer uses good range, good footwork, um, but I think Billy Q can make this dirty and get into range and uh, and just wear out Zalal here. Yeah, in the big cage. If this fight was in the big cage, I would be like Zalal holds a lot more options. But in the small cage, things are just going to get a little bit tighter, um, harder to get away from Billy Q in that in that scenario. Um, I love Zalal's striking defense. He doesn't really take a clean strike almost ever. I see him roll everything. Um, the grappling defense, Taporia couldn't submit him and uh, had a lot of reversals on Damon Blackshear to take over top position. Kind of a question of just if Zalal has enough output because Billy Q will have that output in any fight. So um, good fight. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take Zalal by decision. Okay, for the next fight, we have Peyton Talbot versus Cameron Simon. I'm going with Cameron Simon. Um, I think that he can work more elements of the game here, of an MMA game in, in this fight. I feel like Peyton Talbot stands very tall with his chin in the air, and uh, he does his pressure game, which is very effective. But I think Simon can, for one, in round one, clip Talbot, because Talbot just leaves that chin out there when people are fresh they can hit him they can hit him good and uh we might even see a knockdown in round one for simon um and then i could see him edging out round two and then round three being very competitive as well so i think he's just to be slightly ahead uh talbot looks good in these fights but he's also you know not faced uh some of the fighters i feel like simon's faced in terms of caliber and uh simon on the bad uh, bad luck with Christian Rodriguez, you know, big weight advantage for Rodriguez coming into that fight. And, uh, you know, couldn't work some of the elements of his game because of that. Um, but for the most part, I, I, I feel like Simon has just a little bit more high level experience at this moment, although he's the under guy. And I'm going to take it by decision. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I love this fight. Both these guys are super young Talbot 25 and, and Simon 23. Um, so we'll hear their names for. 10, 10 years probably so um yeah i mean simon has a little more uh higher level experience been in the ufc for for a year or two around there so uh talbot in his last one uh kind of got gra- out grappled in the first round and then started taking over in two and three most of his finishes are in that second or third round too so uh he's, he's i won't say a slow starter but uh it takes him a while to get going and and He's winning by by out volumeing these people and accumulation of damage here. Um, I think Simon can can work in some grappling to start in this fight and just threaten with it as well um, to get ahead early in this fight. And I think he takes two out of the three rounds. I think this one goes longer as well. Um, I don't think uh, either one of them will finish each other. But uh, yeah, really high level fight here, and uh, I think this could be the main event here. Yeah, they're putting the, for another day. They're putting the prospects against each other in this matchup, and uh, they've been loving to do that recently with a lot of the bantamweights, a lot of the flyweights. So it'd be interesting to see what happens. Um, close fight, fun fight. A lot of strikes will be thrown for the most part, unless Talbot's on his ass uh, getting wrestled. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, Simon by decision. All right, guys, for the main event. Uh, please drop a like, comment, subscribe. As always, check out that Patreon, guys. Beat the line movement. Uh, just $5 a month. It pays for itself, I swear to God. Uh, 
and uh, Amanda Hibas versus Rose Namajunas. I'm going on the Thud Rose side. Um, I just feel like she's a cleaner striker, Amanda Hibas. Um, she's a little bit uh, herky-jerky on the feet, and she can get clipped pretty easily. Um, I'm going to take Namajunas by decision. However, I do think a knockout is very live here, just knowing Rose's ability with her hands and that Hibas has no role or much head defense. But just with uh, how Rose has been a little bit more passive in her last couple fights, I feel like uh, this one will still go to decision. So what do you think? Yeah, interesting fight. Um, Rebos will be will be screaming a lot in there, I'd imagine. I think Rose is better footwork and in and out of range a little quicker as well. Um, she, yeah, she Rose did come up to um, flyweight in her last one. Um, when she fought um, Manon Furo, and she looked a little quicker than Furo. And I, I would say the same here as well. I think she'll be a little quicker than uh, Rebus here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really... Do you think they could grapple here? Uh, I would see I Amanda Hebos has a very natural um, headlock throw that she uses a lot. So yeah. you might see some of that, however... If I had to pick a better wrestler, it would be Rose. But Hibas has good BJJ. I think I think it stays on the feet, to be honest. But yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I I think it stays on the feet for for however long it lasts. Yeah, just better boxing in and out of range. As long as she's throwing enough volume, um, I believe she got hurt her hand in the Furo fight. If I'm not mistaken, broke her but, pinky was like sideways when she was fighting. Yeah, and then obviously the one before that was Esparza. Yeah. Um, don't need to talk about that one. As long as she's thrown enough volume, uh, I, th- I think she'll win this one. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, Hebus kind of been in between strawweight and bantamweight a couple times, coming back up to, or sorry, uh, strawweight and flyweight, coming back up to flyweight for this one. So both girls should, you know, size up to each other pretty equally. Obviously, Hebus would be a little bit more muscular. And uh, that's the one thing for Rose. I felt like in that, Faro fight, you can see that she has a hard time putting on any muscle when she came up in weight. She just came in a, a higher body fat. Um, it's obviously harder for chicks to gain that muscular weight, but uh, Faro is a bad opponent in terms of size to be welcome to the division for. Right. Um, other than that, um, that's all I really got for this main event. So You think there's a finish? Like I said, I think Rose, I don't think Hebus can really finish Rose, but I think Rose could uh, easily knock out Hebus just with her head movement. Um, I think the, the over-under will be set at four and a half rounds, which I would never pay that over price for, considering Rose just has knockouts on her resume. And uh, I think people will end up playing that over just because of her uh, Carlos Barza fight, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk that, so... Yeah, interesting fight. Uh, yeah, bets will be out for this card uh, on Patreon. So, again, check that out. And uh, anything else from you? Yeah, you got your fighter notes up there, too. Got all that good stuff. Got the that the out long early. shot plays. Oh, yeah, we got all. all and if you want to join as a free member, you still get some free amenities there as well. So, check that out. Okay, for the bets for Tuivasa versus Tybora. That's a sweep. I mean, the no contest, I can't control that. Who knows what would have happened. Uh, but a nice 3.42 units uh, coming out now to uh, 7.7 units on the year uh, and uh, 15 a 15% ROI at this point. That's awesome. If you guys don't know, like 7% is really good. So we're pulling out the tricks here um, and on a sh- pretty... Pretty hard card for people to bet. Uh, we pulled out great wins. So, uh, what are your thoughts initially? Uh, yeah, there's a, a landmine there. I think uh, the obvious one was Kennedy and Joku. Uh, avoided that, didn't parlay him with anything. And uh, yeah, um, obviously glad I didn't. But yeah, I I, I honestly thought C Rod won. Um, in the second round, he did more damage. 10 8, Delgarian first round. Second round, it was close, but I thought C-Rod did more damage, and then obviously 10-8 in the, in the third. I, I was shocked the scorecard wasn't 28-28 to 28 right away because 
I, I, w- I was surprised Dildarian got a 10-8 for round one because most of it was just wrestling and they were kind of scrambling for a good portion of the round. Um, he definitely controlled, no doubt. Um, but there wasn't any fight ending sequences other than that, like Peruvian necktie, which C Rod right. defended. Um, but yeah, I mean, round two, if you look at it, man, uh, and a lot of it is uh, what happens at the end of the round is just biased towards the judges. I mean, C Rod, uh, he had like a jumping knee that hit Dolgarian in the face. And I think Dolgarian had two strikes that round and then this control time on the fence. So. It's hard to judge these fights, but I think the 10-8 was obvious for C-Rod in round three. Uh, n- nevertheless, I mean, Dolgarian's fucking good. I mean, I know he gassed out, but to to manhandle uh, C-Rod yeah. like that for like rounds one and two for a decent portion is still extremely impressive to me. So, um, Yeah, I feel like uh, everybody outside of the top 15 probably would have been finished uh, in that first round. Um, besides C-Rod there. Yeah, and if you guys think we're getting lucky too, I mean, fuck, I have like a close decisions keeping track of how bets do. We're still negative on like losing close decisions. So um, if this one's lucky to you, I mean, overall, we haven't beaten everyone this year. So um, next, total sweat bet, but uh, it hit actually pretty well. No one got knocked down or anything like that. So Hulabal and Danny Silva go the distance. I thought cool about one rounds one and two just double the significant strikes. And, uh, again, I can see why the decision could be close because cool just got out muscled by a guy who missed weight. Danny Silva's fucking good too. That's what I also think. He's got a good chin. Um, and you know, it goes the distance and uh nice little hit there. Yeah. He was uh, pushing the pace for most of the, um, fight and, um, just pressuring cool yeah, it definitely was a 15 minute sweat. I think uh I don't know. I assumed he slipped down. It was like at the 2:30 mark in the third round. He like cool about like slipped on the cage or something. I was like, "Oh my god." Oh, I was, right. Like, I was like partially watching and partially watching a basketball game, so I was and like, I, "Oh my I, god." I get nervous. I'm like, oh, should, "I should have yeah. bet that over two and a half, not go the distance cuz yeah. you just start sweating." Um Exactly. Battle and Losa Again, I felt like the under in the first minute, I was like, oh, the under's money. And then um, Losa just stopped engaging and Battle was just touching him and touching him and touching him. So I don't know if that under would have hit or not. Um, I don't know if the UFC will make that fight happen again. I I, I don't know. And because uh, it feels like Battle would just walk right through him. Yeah, I, I was I was about to say, I, I, I think Battle would be like a minus 200, minus 250 favorite if they fought again maybe even more because i think a lot of people would re-bet him um but yeah what did it, what did it close at? he he um, it was like, minus like minus 190 then. he shocked oh, me man. with his ability to fade out of range like he just was not letting losa get close at all but he looked huge at the same time so uh yeah um and a hell of a post-fight speech from battle uh, <laughs> that gained, was funny uh, yeah he, i mean he that uh he's probably gained a lot of fans uh from that speech i would imagine he gained right. one from me as well. So, um, then parlays. Well, anyway, yeah, yeah, we'll keep moving. Anyway, parlays. Uh, we haven't missed a parlay this year, which was the opposite of last year, which was just getting fucking mined on these. But I'll tell you what: the real way to not fuck up on these parlays is just avoid the fucking mines, man. And Kennedy at minus seven hundred was a fucking mine, and uh, and you know. You had a separate parlay that you didn't end up throwing on the sheet. I think you just forgot to post it, so we decided not to report it. But you had Mike Davis and uh, Tiago Moises, and that was a pretty clean clean hit right there. But, uh, again, avoiding the landmines is what you got to do. And Kennedy is just, uh, just not smart. Not a, good, not a smart fighter at all. And after the fight, him putting his arms up like he won? Get out of here, dude. Oh, my yeah. God. Real um, performance by him. It looked like he was just like shadow boxing out there, just throwing out a jab to to nothing for the first two rounds, and then he got dropped, and then it was like, oh my god, I actually have to do something. Hard to believe he beat Olberg, but that's only because <laughs> right. Olberg got more gas Gassed than even uh, yeah. OSP did. So, right. Anyway, back to this parlay and Helder uh, Gregario that over hit pretty easily. They tried to grapple. 
Um, man, all these prospects from Aljo and Rob's gym that they hype up, they always underperform, like Dennis Bajuka and all these guys. They just never turn out. Um, and then Ode and Fieldho. I mean, Ode just cannot get a, a back in the win column here. And uh, Fieldho, just that pressure and that he stayed, he stayed so tight to Ode the, that entire time is impossible for um, Ode to to really do anything. So great wins. Yeah. Uh, feel how, uh, feel how performance was, was amazing. And, uh, he pulled out the Bryce Mitchell at the, at the end there, pulling out the Holy Bible. We appreciate that. Appreciate that under and, uh, cashing some bets for us. Yes, sir. Um, in terms of picks, man, we didn't do great, but I, I don't ever claim to be the best at picking fights and especially a card like this. And, I mean, if we're going for a sweep and we got, like, a little over half the fights right, I, I mean, fuck, that's that's knowing to how to pick a spot, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to think. T- Tuivasa and Tybora. I don't know what Ty Tuivasa is doing when he's getting choked out and he's got two arms just, like, out flat. It's like, dude, create space for, to get air with your arms. I, I don't know what he was doing. Um I don't think he knows what he was doing. He was like trying to look for uh, at his corner for for help. Uh, yeah, it looked like he didn't know what he was doing. Right. Well, there's nothing else to say than uh, get on the Patreon because uh, that's uh, easy money. It's a three card win streak. I believe it's like I don't know. Is it? I think it's like five and a half, six units straight on those three weeks. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, five bucks a month, completely affordable. To pay for. It'll pay for itself, as you can fucking see. So, um, any more thoughts? No, uh, nope. Uh, the in the last bets video, the the one extra I put out there was Macy Jason, and uh, she did her best uh, performance out there and submitted her in the first round. So, yeah, I obviously don't like betting on women, but uh, that was a good performance from her as well. So, mm-hmm. shout out Macy! Woo woo woo! <laughs> All right, guys. Peace. Peace. No, I know. It doesn't matter from the trenches. I'm built like this. The old doubt to me, I couldn't do it. The old said I couldn't do it. Look at me now.